I've been putting this off, but it's finally time to have the talk. Yes, that talk, the one about El Nino. And let me start with what El Nino is not, courtesy of Saturday Night Live from 1997. I am El Nino. All other tropical storms must bow before El Nino. Despite what Chris Farley implies, El Nino is not a storm, tropical or otherwise. Instead, it's an anomalous warming of the waters of the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, typically from South America to the international dateline and within about 10 degrees of the equator, the area roughly shown here. During an El Nino, those unusually warm waters provide extra heat and moisture to the atmosphere, fueling extra instability, rising air, and more thunderstorms than usual in that part of the tropical Pacific. This animation starts back in mid-October and shows the departure from average of ocean temperature. The oranges and reds that girdle the equator from the shores of northwestern South America westward across the Pacific. They represent water that's four to eight degrees warmer than average. That's the fingerprint of the ongoing El Nino, which is quite strong compared to El Nino's from the recent past. Now, since this is all happening thousands of miles from the US, what's the big deal? Well, unlike Las Vegas, what happens in the tropics doesn't stay there. Instead, the impacts ripple into the mid-latitudes. Here, I'll focus on the northern hemisphere. First, the warming in the tropics increases the temperature difference with latitudes farther north, and that strengthens the so-called subtropical jet stream and increases the chance that juicy storms will dump rain in the southern U.S. and even California. Farther north in the Pacific, a persistent upper level low tends to dominate the Gulf of Alaska during El Nino winters. And as surface storms spin around that mother load, their counterclockwise circulations pull relatively mild air unusually far north into western and central Canada and even the northern US. So El Nino winters there tend to be less harsh than average. Only a few El Ninos in the last 50 years were as strong as the current one. Here's a look at sea surface temperature anomalies during two of those, 1982-83 and 1997-98. As before, orange and red indicate warmer than average waters. From a predictive sense, it's reasonable to ask whether we can use what happened during past El Nino winters to project this winter, sort of analog forecasting like we do in our long shot segment. So here's the average temperature anomaly across North America in meteorological winter, December to February, during three previous winters when El Nino was as strong as it is now. Yellow and orange indicate warmer than average by three to six degrees. And you see the relative warmth in Western and Central Canada and the Northern US that we talked about before, but also notice that warmth even extended into the Eastern US during those past strong El Nino winters. December so far in Pennsylvania has certainly followed that pattern, warmer than average across the state. And I have a feeling Fred has similar news in the extended forecast. Next.